Hello, hello, good evening and welcome. Welcome to another lesson. So um, tonight we are going to be wrapping up the topic that we had pending from yesterday, or at least that we started working yesterday, which was reported a speech. And then we're going to jump into um, talking a little bit more about the present perfect and simple past, which is, you know, like a contrast that those two make. And we're going to be learning and practicing a little bit uh, about that. And uh, yeah, so those are the ideas for this evening. Also, something important is that we're also getting started with the new practice that we're going to have, which is going to be, um, you know, the speeches. So tonight we're going to have the presentations from Imelda and uh, Ms. Garcia. Those are like the main speeches yeah. that we're having. Si, sí? dígame, Rosa. Uh, good evening. I have a question I need with uh, the platform. You need help with the platform? Yeah. ¿En qué secciones sería? Um, ya le digo, espera, espera un momento. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I have it open. Um, Lorena, in your case, you told yeah. me that uh, there are two that didn't work. So it was <laughs> number three and number six, right? Yeah, number three, I already did it. Uh -huh. I, I just need the, the number six. <laughs> Okay. Um, no, it's, it's, a, it's the opposite. The number number three, I need it. It is often it is often considered rude to ask someone's age. It okay. Uh, did you did you copy and paste from the the message that I sent you, or did you type it down? I type it, but I I I took like a, the apostrophe, uh -huh. and, I, and I and I and I didn't. The platform did accept me that, but I can try right now. Yeah, because maybe the problem that we're having is the apostrophe. Because as I said before, you know, normally these apostrophes are just tricky and uh, a little bit complicated to I work tried. around. I tried um change the the apostrophe, but I can uh, it doesn't work either. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Okay, so if I. The problem... I uh, uh, is anyone else having this issue with exercise? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's knowledge one point two. Uh -huh, with no. knowledge check one point two and ex and exercise number three. See, sí, dígame. I I have a question. Uh, with section one. Uh, ejercicio one point two. With with um the question number six. E number eight. Okay, so in the case of number six, as we are going to be touching base now with um uh, reported speech, and we are we're practicing this. Uh, so for this one, the statement is we're getting married, and within you know uh, within brackets we have there that it's she told me right like something. Sorry, something that somebody else or that a, a girl has told us. So the sentence will have to be something like, she told me that uh, they were getting married. So I'll send it here on the chat so that you have it. And it will be something like this. She told me that they were getting married. Did you have anything similar to this, Rosa? Um, tell me, tell me. Okay. So, and number eight, you said. So, number eight is, the statement is, we didn't take the train, uh, sorry, the eight train. We didn't take the eight o'clock train. And within um, within brackets, once again, we have, they told me. So, it's something that we heard from a group of people. So, in this case, it's going to be something like, they told me that they didn't take the eight o'clock train that's one sí, option sí como la ha escrito usted no sé que si hay error en la plataforma pero a mí me sale error siempre entonces lo que vamos if you if you don't use o'clock it's ah. okay or if you don't use um 
de that. En el caso de las seis, eso podría ser. Podríamos quitar Para, el that. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. In, 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 the, in the number six, you don't yeah. use that. I Ajá. have all of them correct. Yeah, in number six, it will be something like she told me they were getting married. So without yeah. that. Sería esa también la otra opción. Without that. And yes. for um for the train option, you can say something like they told me that uh they didn't take the eight o'clock train without <inaudible> saying o'clock. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. And then the other one, entonces vamos a hacer lo mismo, quitarle el that y sería they told me they didn't take the eight o'clock train. So I'll send you how to basically do it. So it would be they the, um they told me they didn't take the that um, that they that they didn't take the eight, eight train mm -hmm. because with that it, it is accepted proper. Oh okay great. Entonces en el caso que lo acepte con el dar entonces se le envío ahorita como sería solo le cambio eso y lo. Yo he puesto they told me that that they, they didn't. Ajá uh -huh, that they didn't take. The eight. The eight. Train. Y luego le ponemos a jalo de él. Just train. Without mm -hmm. anything. Okay, so I hope it works. Um, so in your case, Lorena, did it did it work with new apostrophes or new examples? Yeah, or yeah. It yeah, did? it's fair. Oh, yeah. okay, great, great. That's great. All right, so... um. Ah, no, but in number one, no, no, I'm, I'm just helping, oh, for... helping him, her, no, in number one point uh, this, no, it no, doesn't it doesn't, work. no, it doesn't work. Imelda, does it work for you in 1.2? Which one? In exercise. Number, number three. Uh-huh, in number three. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work? All right, anyone else who is having issues with that? A exercise or um, knowledge check 1.2 and exercise number three? Uh, me. Okay. And, and I have that uh, also in the first one. Thank you. 1.2. Okay. Oh, you... And exercise one. All right, let's see. So you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, you're welcome, Rosa. Let's see. Exercise one, uh, which is it's appropriate to talk about politics, at work, and school. So here, the, the thing is that we're going to have to change it. We're going to have to say something like, um, talking about politics at work or school is inappropriate. So that will be the, um, the proper answer. Talking about politics at, at work or school is inappropriate. Probably that's the, the case or that's the reason why it's not accepting it. Uh, but I, uh -huh. I did, but it doesn't work. It doesn't and, work? Mm -hmm. um, and the comma? I put it on, but doesn't work too. Hmm. Uh, for me, it works. It works for you? Yeah. Okay. So, Leslie, maybe uh, if you want, you can copy and take this uh, sentence that I just sent here in the chat. Probably that works. But for okay. one, for number three, I think I will have to report it then because I was trying as well. You know, I was trying the, the, <laughs> the examples and uh, it didn't. Por eso les pregunto si alguien más está teniendo el problema porque igual, o sea, no... No yeah. me lo aceptaba y, o sea, ajá, probablemente sí sea error que tengan, ¿verdad? Ahí. Igual uh, todavía creo que está el error del mes pasado de que cuando no se mete, uh -huh. puede que esté en la página. Todavía oh, yeah. error. Sí, eso, eso ya trae un buen rato. Ustedes porque pues estuvieron desactivados por un rato, pero eso sí, ya, ya día viene pasando. Yo creo que ya tiene como seis meses que um, cuando al intentar ingresar hay que esperar hasta... 10 minutos para que cargue. So yeah, that's something that's, hap that's been happening for a while. Uh, for me, for me, I don't have that problem. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's great because, yeah. yeah. In, in, Immediately, yeah, I don't have that problem. Yeah, for me, sometimes like, you know, now that I have, uh, I'm covering a, a, a beginner before you guys. And of course, for beginners, there's like, you know, they need to see the platform and like they need more help and stuff. Um, <laughs> So yeah, the thing to is, turn on the, the, the platform before an hour before. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to log into the platform. It's like today, for example, I was at my girlfriend's house and I have forgotten that I had a class at seven. It's weird because now that, you know, the, the, the new <laughs> schedule is weird. I was used to having classes at eight, but now the class is at seven and I was like, just chill with her. And then she told me like, hey, it's already 640. Like, aren't you leaving? Y yo le dije, que ya te estorbo. Y me dijo, no, it's, it's, your, it's your class. So yeah. <laughs> I 
I had to wait. It was actually like 7.30 when the platform actually opened. So it, it was a long, long time. Mm. And that's why I have it open now. Teacher, mm -hmm. maybe you need to clean the, the history gotcha. from the navigator. I tried. Yeah, I tried. And it's it's still the same. It's something that has been A happened. new computer. <laughs> and the computer. A new house. More space than yeah. the hard, hard disk. <laughs> A faster internet. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Maybe. No, it's, it's weird because I tried from my phone and it's the same. So they told me that it might be because of my user. I don't know. Maybe because I've been here for too long. So it's like maybe they need to fire me and then rehire me so that it works better. <laughs> maybe. But yeah, uh, a so new yeah, cell phone for 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 Christmas. Yeah, new <laughs> cell phone, new computer, new house, new new everything. <laughs> but uh, it's something that happens, you know. It's not it's not that bad. Um, I have actually gotten used to trying to log in like ten minutes before, because yeah, I tried with the history thing. I tried clearing the cache in the computer, and basically nothing had worked. Uh, at least not um thus far. But it's not something that happens only to me. It's something that has been happening for more people. It's been, you know, going around for the last, like, as I said, the last six months, kind of. So, yeah, it's 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 a, a little bit of an issue. But okay, it has been a long time, and now I need to hear from you. I need to hear from your speeches. Um, And for tonight, it's Imelda. You picked uh, talking about the different breeds of dogs, right? Yeah. Okay, and in the case of Gabby, what topic did you end up picking, Ms. Garcia? Um, five tips to defining curls. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can I record? Lo voy a grabar y ese sí se lo voy a mandar a mi novia, miren. Okay. So, Imelda, can you please get started? Okay, well, there's are many different dog breeds, but the popularity of most of these breeds is depend upon the region. Countries around the world have different belief, culture, histories, and lifestyle. And this play heavily into what breeds many be popular. For example, in China, uh, we got uh, pugs, but these dogs were treasured by the emperors of China. And the pugs we know today are most likely descent from dogs imported to Europe from, from China. And also we have French bulldog from Frey, France. This dog has roots in England. When immigrants moved to France for better work, they both they bulldogs along with them, and thus popular popularizing <laughs> the breeds in France. Uh, also, we have Labrador Labrador from United States. The exact origin of the Labrador Retriever is unknown, and uh, we got we have Caucasian Shepherd dog from Russia and Border Collie from Australia, uh, Shiva Inu from Japan. Uh, it's look like, it's look like uh, the Akita breeds that we watch in Hachiko movie. Mm, okay. And, uh -huh, and we have Bulldog, English Bulldog from England. And last but not least, a German Shepherd from Germany. All right, great, very good. Well, well done. That was that was nice information. Now, um, the word that you struggled with was popularized, right? Popularized. Creo que esa fue va. Popularizing. <laughs> oh, popularizing. With, with the, uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, so popularizing. Yeah, popularizing basically means making popular you know making it uh well known or more known or recognized by the people so yeah popularizing great 
nice but yeah it's, it was nice information thank you very much thank you for sharing um you know about the different kinds of breeds of dogs that exist around the world now something that caught my attention is that and it is something that i have also heard before is that there is almost a version for bulldogs all over the world like you know there are bulldogs from almost everywhere like you mentioned there are bulldogs yeah. from from friends there are bulldogs from uh england I have also heard about Argentine bulldogs. So it's like bulldogs are basically everywhere. And yeah, but in... but but they have the some origin, and then for the immigration, uh -huh. they have the mothers. They have been like evolving or or like mixing with other with other dogs. Yeah. Would you imagine a bulldog uh mixed with a chihuahua? That would be funny. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the and kind of uh -huh. even yeah. like I didn't hear about the aguacateros dogs. <laughs> yeah, she didn't mention. Oh yeah, I I forgot them. Oh yeah. my god! And I was gonna say I'm my sorry. my dog, for example, it's a mix between. Uh, sorry, Imelda. Uh huh. But by the way, I I have two chihuahuas and I forgot them. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting I, when you said last but not least, I thought you were gonna say Chihuahuas from Mexico, but you said uh the German Shepherd. But still, um, in my case, okay. my dog is a mix between a bulldog, a Chihuahua, and an aguacatero. I don't know how that came out, but I'm honest, it's it's a mix of those three. And when you look at him, he looks buffy, like you know the 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 shoulders they look big, and he looks like muscular and all. But he's very tiny, like a chihuahua. But he's part aguacatero, and it's it's weird. And you know, my dog is weird, but he, he is so funny. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's weird. It's a, he's a weird dog, and he is also a little bit of a mix with a um with a rabbit because he jumps a lot. But still, uh, let's hear now from Gabriela. In your case, Gabriela, you said five tips to take care of your curls, right? Okay, so I start recording now. No, just kidding. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk about five tips to take care of your curls. Um, defining curls is the most important step in, for, in hair routine. I'll mention five tips to achieve curly curls. First, dry in the hair. Try to do it with a microfiber towel or a cotton t-shirt, not with a normal towel. You can use a diffuser or try air dry. Two, second the hair in short groups. To define correctly, um, it's necessary to divide the hair into short groups so the product will act in each strand. Three, cleaning. Do not use shampoo every day because the curly uh, hair can lose all the uh, natural oils. Four, using the correct technique to define. Use the correct technique depending on the type of your hair, of course. Um, it is, uh, we have a, a like a, I don't know how to say, but uh, like a types of mm -hmm. each rules or each curls, starting with gay, with waves. Waves. That, mm -hmm. yeah, that is from. 3A, mm -hmm. uh, that is the definition. And when uh, to find finalization, I don't know how to say it, or ending, ending to Afro, that is 4C. Okay. Um, the methods to define correctly the curls are first, spraying hands to put your hands like your hair like this. That is spraying hands. Then we have raised hands to do it like this. You can you put your hand in your hair and you go down. Then we have the crunch method. We put our hands and going um, up mm -hmm. to define the curl. Mm -hmm. And we have the pineapple method. Uh, if you notice, sometimes I use a bun. So mm -hmm. that's a pineapple method. And we can use flexi rods or um, things to do the curlies uh, going up 
and stay in that position. Um, use always the proper cooling cream, styling hairs, shampoo, conditioner, and a correct comb. Five, and the last one, protecting curls. Never brush your dry curls. This can ruin your curl pattern and cause frizz. Use curly, deafening, styling products while the hair is still wet. Uh, use product to protect them from heat or from rainy days and because temperature can cause damage in the hair. And don't forget the most important stuff or the most important thing, shout your curls with empowerment. Okay, yes. great. Very good. I love it. I love it. And uh, I was simply thinking, um, I am great as a boyfriend because I have given my girlfriend, uh, you know, the, the dryer thing or the diffuser that you mentioned. I got her that for her last birthday last year. I uh, have also helped her because she before she was never taking care of the curls. And I, I fell in love with her because of the curls. I, I have known her for almost... 10 years now and I remember that I used to see her when I was going to um to school I was back in it was back in like seventh grade or eighth, eighth grade so it was a long time ago um she is the niece of the one that used to be the principal back then so I used to look at them when they were you know going to the school we used to go to the same school and uh, that was the main thing that I used to look at and then I basically forgot about her like we lost contact we never contacted but the thing is that yeah now when I uh, got to see her again that's the thing that I basically fell in love with but she never took care of them but she has learned now she has like a special calm I don't know if you have one but they're like like yeah. very very wide I have five types of of comms yeah yeah but uh, I will send you a photo of five types of comms Oh, I have one that is uh, like a bowl, mm -hmm. and it has the the teeth. I don't know how to say it, uh -huh. but it is it is it is circular. It's not plain, like flat. As the flat as uh -huh. they always. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right, that's cool. And yeah, the thing is that um. The techniques that you were mentioning, I have seen her also doing, you know, the, taking care of her hair now with those techniques, the the, the praying hands and the, basically the gathering of the comms. Uh, I mean, the, 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 um, the thing is. The ra uh, ra 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 uh -huh. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's great. And uh, I think I will not have to share the video with her because probably you guys have looked at similar information because now she's taking better care of uh, you know my beautiful hair it's hers but it's also mine so <laughs> <laughs> so you know better than than she yeah about the, girls. the thing is that my sister she's very crazy you know about um hair and like personal um health and stuff so she used to give me a lot of like advices so that i will pass them on before when they were not friends now that they are friends it's like even my sister helps her to to like calm her hair and everything so it's it's great so now it's we're a happy family now so thing is uh we're going to continue talking about reported speech last night we were stopped uh at, at what was it i think yeah right here at the models so model verbs as we saw they are some of them stay the same. Some of them are, are basically the same thing. But now with questions, once again, we come with double H questions. Questions are not going to stay the same. When we are using reported speech in terms of questions, they are not going to be the same. They're going to change into a statement. And how does it change? Well, it's very simple. It's not really that complicated. Cause for example, here we have a question. It's a direct question uh, and it reads, what is the post office? Uh, where is the post office, please? So direct question, right? Something like this, this tag question or the please section is not going to be added in the reported speech. Okay, that's something that is not going to be added. That's something that we're going to omit when we are reporting um, the conversation. So in terms of reporting, how we're going to report it then? We're going to have to say something like, she asked me where the post office was. So the only thing is going to be that here 
we are going to state something very similar to the question. Okay, it's going to be very, very similar. However, we're going to place the verb at the end. The verb where everything changes is going to be added as a comment at the end in this case. Okay, so where is the post office? We're going to change it at as she asked me where the post office was. She asked me where the post office was. Now, how about for this other example? What are you doing? What are you doing? It's simple. We're going to say, she asked me what I was doing. Okay. She asked me what I was doing. And as I said yesterday, we can always remember, we can always change this pronoun for uh, a simple name. For example, here we can say something like, Juan asked me what I was doing. So Juan asked me what I was doing. Now, to continue a conversation, and that's something that I forgot to mention yesterday because this is a very useful um, structure. You can say something like, Juan asked me what I was doing. Do you have any idea why, for example? Do you have any idea of why? So that's to like start, you know, the conversation. Of course, only reporting, only saying the reported speech sentence is not going to get you into a conversation. What is going to get you into a conversation is what you say after that, because reporting is simply just stating what somebody else said. But here you are actually using it in a proper way and also starting a conversation that can last, you know, for hours, maybe. Uh, and as I said, this is a structure that is very useful when it comes to um, gossiping or sitting around and talking, you know, with people about things that have happened. Like if, if uh, you're telling stories about something that has happened at work, you are going to need reported speech. It's something that it's, it's way better to do it like this instead of saying things as if you live them in first person. So. Uh, I highly recommend that you guys practice this structure and, and remember how to use like, you know, the different sections that there are because it's going to prove its its use um, very, very, very easily. So here, as I said, this will be, for example, the way in which you can start, you know, the conversation. Introduction is as one asked me what I was doing. Do you have any idea why? So from that point on, as uh, I have mentioned, you can follow on the conversation for a long time. Now, next one up, who was that fantastic man? Well, this one is going to be different because here, as you can see, it's in the past. So we have a past verb. This past verb is going to have to take a step back and going back from the past actually means going back into past perfect. Therefore, we're going to sound something like, she asked me who that fantastic man had been. So not was, but had been. So uh, basically that's the change. Here, if you remember, been is the past perfect version or the perfect version of the verb be. Therefore, that's why we're going to use this verb right here. So she asked me who that fantastic man had been. And that's how you are going to transform Double H questions into reported speech. This is only for double H, okay? Not for every uh, kind of question. Now, moving on, we see the yes, no questions. These ones are a bit different, okay? Here, what we're going to do is that we're going to use if. That is like the main change when it comes to the yes, no questions. Because in yes, no, you only have um, two options. Therefore, it's, you know, a term of possibility, a possibility between one or the other. Therefore, you're going to use if. So in the direct question we have, do you love me? This is very needy, by the way. But um, yeah, do you love me? And the reported speech version is going to sound something like, he asked me if I loved him. So as you see, hasta el, hasta el drama, ¿verdad? Que, que, que se tiene. O sea, he asked me if I loved him. It's like you're telling your friend that your fiance is doubting on your love for him or her. So it's it's something that is kind of dramatic and um, it sounds way better when you're, you know, doing that kind of like actualization, let's say, uh, about a specific situations. So yeah, do you love me? He asked me if I loved him. So it's, it's like, I cannot believe that he did that. 
basically that's uh like the the sort of idea that reported the speech is going to give when you do um you know add of course a little bit of drama to what you're going to say now in this case here we have have you ever been to mexico this is a little bit of a more serious question so have you ever uh been to mexico this one is going to be something like she asked me if i had ever been to mexico um so yeah she asked me if i had ever been to mexico so here once again it's not going to be like um like too dramatic or too tricky so it's 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 relatively simple okay have you ever been to mexico and the reporter speech is she asked me if i had ever been to mexico now in the, the case of uh yes no question with the verb be straight on it's basically going to be the same idea so here the thing is that you don't use any um auxiliary verb so here if, if you notice you go straight from the pronoun into the verb because as you know do is simply a means to get to the to the question now when you have uh this verb the verb have or the auxiliary have you are going to need to add this have almost all the time here so that's something that i i was forgetting to mention so yeah you will have to add this had when um when you have a question with have so um so yeah, mm. and then when you have questions with B or that start with B, you're going to have to add also the version that corresponds to the to the um to the verb B. So are you living here? And you will have to say something like she asked me if I was living here. So that's something that uh you need to pinpoint and you need to remember the direct questions that come with do are not going to add any a special verb over here after the pronoun or after the noun or after the subject but the ones that start with have are going to have to have a had uh, after the subject and the ones that start with any of the forms of be are going to have to have a form of be that corresponds to the past version of this thing so yeah relatively easy as well and of course you're gonna use if instead of um, the forms that we have been looking at before now, for the last uh, section, which is going to be request, in this case, it's not command, it's request, okay? Aquí hay diferencias, ¿verdad? Ayer hablábamos acerca de los commands. Aquí no necesariamente tengo commands, sino que son requests. So, with commands, it's different. With commands, if you remember, or we're going to go back a little bit into the commands section, the commands were don't say anything, and the words or the um, the verbs that you use were something, as I, as I was explaining, something like warned, or um, recommended or in, in, in enforced or things like those. So it's not gonna be asked because we're not necessarily talking about uh, a favor or something that you do because you want to. In the case of a request, here you are going to use the verb ask because a request is of course something that you ask from someone as a favor. So the first one is, please help me. And the report of the speech, is going to be, she asked me to help her. She asked me to help her. Simple, right? Then we have, please don't smoke. Please don't smoke. This is a request. Uh, it would be, she asked me not to smoke. She asked me not to smoke. Something important as well is that these negatives are always going to be um, dismounted, let's say. So all versions of do, when you do uh when you use do as an auxiliary it's not going to be reported it's not going to be used in the reported version so you're going to have to say something like not instead of uh including the don't you're going to have to say not so she asked me not to smoke so that's something that is also going to change because you're not going to be using don't so it will not be something like she asked me don't smoke so it's not going to be like that it's going to be not to smoke uh, then we have, could you bring my book tonight? Could you bring my book tonight? And we're going to use something like, she asked me to bring her book that night. And this is also something, uh, you can also see this uh, on the platform when you are um, looking through the, or looking at the video that is presented there. Um, as it is about the past, 
when you use reported speech with that specific time, like let's say that you mentioned this week or um, this month, you are not going to say it like that. You're going to say it as it is something that has happened in the past. Even if it is something that just happened, uh, you're not going to say it as in the moment. You're going to say it as in the past. So whenever you mention a time frame, you're going to have to refer to this time frame, but in the past. So here, instead of saying tonight, could you bring my book tonight, which is something that is happening like now. Uh, and even if you're telling this story tonight, you are going to have to use the version of the past, which is going to be that night. Um, let's say that somebody asked you or invited you to do something um, this week. You're going to have to say that week. Okay. That week. Or um, of course, this is something that can vary and you can also um, use different versions and use, for example, um, let's say the night that that happened, but that is going to be a little bit longer. So, but you can say, for example, the night that that happened or the night that it happened, um, it will be an option. It will be an option, mostly in the case of like, as I said, somebody uh, asking you to go to dinner, let's say. So you're not going to be able to say he invited me to go to dinner or he asked me to go to dinner um, that week, if it is still, you know, during this week. So then maybe you can say something like uh, that week. So, or, or sorry, during that week or during this week. And uh, you can you can use for last night uh, or for, yeah, like uh, the previous night. Uh-huh. You can say something like that, the previous night. Yeah. Or no, the night before. The night, the night before. before or the uh -huh. previous night. Okay. Uh-huh. The night before Thanks. or, uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, she asked me to bring her book. Uh, the previous but, day. The pre uh-huh. The previous week, the previous, or, oh, yeah. the And the problem is that as we're talking about um, past situations and when we use reported speech, it's something about the past. It's basically impossible to talk about the future. You know, it's, it will not be possible to say, for example, the following night. So it will not be um, advisable to do it like that. You will have to say, um, you know, something referred to the past or to avoid any complications, just not mention any time frame at all. Just to, to avoid, you know, getting into into that or, or um, complication, just avoid mentioning time frames and you're going to be safe like that. So, yeah. Um, okay, moving on. The next example, as I said before, when you have these please uh, tags, you're not going to include them in the report. You're not going to mention the please at all. So it would sound something like, could you pass me the milk, please? And the request, the reported request will be, she asked me to pass the milk. She asked me to pass the milk. Um, another thing is that, as you can notice, there are no changes in terms of the tense here with the verbs. For example, here the verb is a smoke, and here we have it as a smoke. Here we have a bring, and here as well, it's going to be bring. The one that changes here, the one that expresses the fact that it's a reported thing, is going to be simply this at the beginning, the first verb. That's the one that is going to change. That is something that I was also missing to explain. Um, so yeah, here, for example, you have the verb pass and the verb pass is going to stay the same. Once again, this is a special thing that happens with requests, okay? The same basically happens with um, with orders or with commands, but here, as we're talking about requests, we need to clarify that this is something that happens especially with requests. Now, uh, and the last will be, would you mind coming early tomorrow? Would you mind coming early tomorrow? So here, we're going to talk about the next day. So she asked me to come early the next day. This is something, once again, as we are recording it in the future. We're talking about something that happened before. Therefore, we can say, for example, something like this. We can say the next day, but it's supposedly something that has already happened. It's something that it's over and that it's done with. We're simply telling this just, you know, because we're having this conversation with um with that person at that time. But it's something that is about the past, something that is finito and done. So yeah. Now, 
Ahora sí, viene el momento de um, ustedes. I want to hear your examples. So, let's see. We have different options. You guys have already seen. We have options, for example, with uh, all the tenses or the regular tenses, like present simple, past conti present continuous, past simple, past continuous, and present past and past perfect. Uh, we also have the tenses with... Um, Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. You have already started. Thank you, Lorena. So, uh, no, no, it is, it is one from the platform, but it's incorrect. And I, I want to know why. Oh, 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 okay. I'm writing with Julia. He told me, he told me that he was writing with Julia. Hmm. What is the error? Uh, maybe of that, maybe. You know, that oh. might be something. That might be something you can take away. He told me he was writing with Julia. Maybe instead of, I have tried, but I want yeah. to do it again. In, instead, of, instead of saying, um, he told me that he was writing with Julia, saying, uh, he told me he was writing with Julia. Because the rest is okay. Okay. Yeah, the rest is not, is not, no, there is no other change that I would do. But of course, as you already know, if, you know, there are more problems or if the problem sticks we can always report it okay but then uh so you have these examples you have uh the the molar verbs you have the questions so you can pick from whichever of these you like to provide the examples i would like to hear what are your examples with reporter speech you will of course have to mention the direct uh version and the reporter version um, so let's start maybe by hearing from example coming from Fernando. Please, Fernando. Can you think of example of a, uh, a reported speech sentence? Uh, good evening. Evening. I'm sorry, I, I can't understand the, your question. Okay, the thing is, I would like, okay, I will give you then a, a, a sentence and then try to give me the version in reporter speech. Um, okay, so that's the one. I love coffee from McDonald's. What would be the reported speech version of this sentence? Uh, he... He said, mm -hmm. he said, uh, he said, love coffee from McDonald's. He said he loved coffee from, from McDonald's. From McDonald's. Very good. That would be the way. Great. So he said he loved coffee from McDonald's. Very nice. Great. That is a nice, nice, nice way of turning this into a reporter speech. Okay, now I will Teacher, then a question. Mm -hmm. Is it's not necessary that uh, in all case? No, as I said yesterday, the use of that is more um, recommended for like dramatic reasons. Like for example, if you want to make it a little bit more dramatic, like more impactful, or when you want to like step aside from the from the thing that you're describing. Like for example, when you're describing something that you do not agree with, it's like you are doing it with a little bit, not of disrespect, but with disagreement, you know, like it's not something that I consider to be correct. So that's when you use that. Um, for example, uh, I love coffee from McDonald's and you don't like coffee from McDonald's, you can say, uh, you can add that in this case. So he said that he loved coffee from McDonald's because you do not share the same idea. So that's when you use that normally or like more recommendedly, it would be that in, in those occasions when you are not agree with it or when you want to be a little bit more dramatic, when you want to add drama to um, to the sentence that you're reporting. So- um, oh. mm -hmm. In that case, in, it is not okay. uh, just he told me because he, I, it is a said, you don't use you said, right? Or, or, or he said it's correct. He said, remember, 
remember here the fact that uh it's it's a report that you're doing about some something that a third person said so it's something that okay. somebody else said it's not something that you are saying like for example if the conversation was straight with me then it will be of you course say, I told he, he told okay. me uh -huh. but okay. if, for example here it's just something that you know i i heard a co-worker say this uh so you reported as he said he loved the uh, coffee from mcdonald's instead of saying all the time he told me because if the conversation was of course straight with you that's when you say he told me because the conversation okay. was taking place with me but if it was something that you overheard about someone else or maybe you were part of the conversation but it wasn't necessarily a straight with you it was probably just a statement you know just with the rest of the people that were there uh there's no need to say he told me because it wasn't something straight to you so yeah <clears throat> it's just like a like a like a comment someone said and you're just reporting on it so yeah and with Imelda so that's the case when you want to express some sort of like disagreement um so that's when you know when you are going to um when you're going to step aside and when you're going to include the, that um quote in there Okay, I'm getting here an example. Okay, yes. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, I'm getting an example here through the chat and it states the following. I'll show you guys right here. All right. So the statement is I have a meeting this afternoon. And then this is these are the ones that I love because here we include a name. So Ricardo said that oh sorry, he this was the only change. It, it will have to be in the past. So Ricardo said that uh, he had a meeting okay, this he, afternoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ricardo said that he had a meeting this afternoon. So yeah, that, but the rest is great because that's the way in which you're supposed to report, um, you know, something that somebody else said. So here, for example, is like, um, let's say your boss or someone is looking for Ricardo and you heard before that Ricardo said, I have a meeting in the afternoon. Um, so you say, Ricardo said he had a meeting this afternoon. So yeah, that's that's the way. That's the, the, the um, <laughs> yeah, that's the proper way in which you're going to report on what someone has stated. Nice. Um, can I please get another example? Let's say something maybe that comes from the past. I um let's say something like can i try sure 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 okay i bought a ticket for the concert all right i bought a ticket for... um mm -hmm. and she said she had bought a ticket for the concert mm -hmm. she said she had bought a ticket for the concert. There you go. That's the way in which you do it. So I bought a ticket for the concert. It's in the past already. So where to go from the past? Well, you go to the past perfect. So she said she had bought a ticket for the concert. Now, here he comes, for example, um, Lorena, if the conversation was just between Leslie and me, and she told me that I bought a ticket for the concert, I will have to say, she told me. me. Uh-huh. And, and when you use that version, when you say she told me, it's also common, common to say that. Yeah. It's common. Yeah, it's very common to say she told me that she had bought a ticket from the concert. It is okay to say, to say it just like this. It is. But it's common to include, uh, include the indicator that. So she told me she bought a ticket for the concert. She had bought a ticket for the concert, sorry. It's okay. But you can also include this. She told me that she had bought a ticket for the concert. So yeah, very good example. Thank you very much, uh, Leslie. Now, anyone else who has an example, uh, maybe now from a situation taking place in the future? I have one but with a question. Okay. Shoot it. How old are you? Very good. 
27. <laughs> 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 That's true. All right. How old are you? Great. Um, how would you report this question? Uh, he asked me <clears throat> how old I was. He asked me how old I was. There you go. He asked me how old I was. Uh, great. And then you also have the example with my name. Oscar asked me how old I was. Yeah, I did that when we just, when we met. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember. Now, I now, now I'm 51. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I, my birthday well. was on August 10. Oh, congrats. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, here we have it. How old are you? Well, he asked me how old I was. I know so many people that have that have their birthday on August tenth. <laughs> I don't know why, but there it's are a special day. <laughs> yeah, there are so many people who have their birthday that day. The the ones that I don't know are people who have their birthday the same day I, I that I do, which is on July twenty first. I only have uh, a pair of twins. I pretend like I don't know them because I don't like to know people who have birthday the same day that I do. Uh, but you know, that's, that's something weird about me. Yeah. I don't like to share my birthday, but anyway. Uh, okay. So I can say that it's a close case. I think it's, you know, something that we already know how to do then the reporter speech, or do you guys still have questions about how to report, how to transform a regular sentence into a reporter speech sentence? Are there any questions left about it? Any blanks that you would like to clarify? All right, well, it seems like we do get it, all right? Then, here are only a few sentences that, or expressions that we can use for report risk, which, um, you know, or like the ways in which, in which we can use it. For example, he claimed that. I told you yesterday, when we say he claimed that is something that we are doubting on. Is something that we do not agree with and we consider that it might be a lie. That's the proper use for he claimed that. You know, it's like they say it's that, but I, I don't believe it. And of course, if you notice here, this is one of the few that has that as like uh, as part of the of the formula. We have that in this one because as I said, we're like, you know, like building up a wall against this comment because we don't believe it. Uh, then we have, he asked me to, he asked me to, he asked me is one of the most commons. Uh, then we have this one that comes with a command. He warned me not to, he warned me not to. Of course, commands normally are negative and they express, you know, something that you're not supposed to do. So of course he warned me not to. Then we have, he promised to. This, of course, is going to be used when somebody has stated a promise to you. Um, so, yeah, he promised you. Uh, this one is one that is not necessarily common. Oh, wait, no, it's the contrary. It's one of the most common ones. It's one of the most common ones because um, this one is, is the one that you use, for example, when someone comes to, to your workplace and they're asking something about, you know, the, the processes that you do. Um, and you report this to your boss or to a coworker that is asking, like, what did that person want? Um, so yeah, you can say he wanted to know, and then you explain the rest of the report. Uh, then he explained that this is of course used when um you're passing over information to somebody else, someone who maybe wasn't uh present at a meeting or something like that. So yeah, he explained that. Then we have he told me that. He told me that, so right, very easy. He told me that, yeah. Then he told me to, this one is when you get an order, okay? He told me that is when you get like a comment, when somebody tells you something. Now, he told me to is when you get an order, when you get instructions to do something. So he told me to. Then he, we also have one of the most common ones. He asked me. He asked me, and then we have, he advised me to, 
he advised me to once again when you get an advice it's like you know somehow a command somehow a recommendation so you're supposed to do something as a result of that recommendation so he asked me to then we have he encouraged me to he encouraged me to once again it's um something that you feel like you're being mm, obliged to do not obliged but at least inspired to do and then we have he wondered this one is uh, very similar to he wanted to know he wondered is very very similar to he wanted to know it's something that you use when you're reporting something to someone who maybe saw you talking to someone else at your at your job maybe at your school so he wondered and normally he wondered is going to be accompanied by an if so it's very very possible to use he wondered with the yes no questions so you will be something like he wondered if um i don't know if we had any ice cream left for example like if somebody gets to the, you know, to the ice cream store and they ask you, hey, do you have any ice cream left? So you can report it as he wondered if we had any ice cream left. So wondered, it's very, very common, uh, commonly used with yes, no questions. All right. So uh, once again, I ask you guys, do you have any questions re regarding reported speech? Because this is basically the last the slide that we're going to share about this topic. Or are we ready to move on? already seems that we are all right so it's just going to be a short introduction into this because remember we have to discuss who are going to be the ones with the speech for tomorrow i hope that i will get um, volunteers if not well of course i'm ready to pick but i would like to pass tomorrow oh great okay so we'll we'll see the topics in a bit if you want to pick any okay. of those or of course you can propose your own uh, i have yeah. a topic <laughs> oh great that's nice <clears throat> so we already have one person that's amazing um so the present perfect versus simple past when to use which well that is the topic that we're going to be facing from here on and this is the, the topic that we're of course going to be um, dealing with tomorrow now as an introduction <coughs> we need to know that we use the present perfect to report a recent event without giving a specific time reference. So present perfect, it has always been about that. The present perfect is only to talk about situations that you have already experienced, but you don't necessarily mention when that happened. On the other hand, the, <coughs> the use of the simple past is to report an event with a specific time reference. So. That is going to be like the main thing. This is with reported speech, but in general, when you use this, the, the present perfect, you talk about something you have already lived, you have already done without necessarily spending time explaining when you did that. When simple past is used, you normally go ahead and include a reference, a time reference. Like, you know, I did this, 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 and this, and this in that way. <clears throat> so it normally includes a time frame. But more on that is going to come tomorrow. For now, we are going to discuss who are going to be the people for tomorrow for um, the speech. One sec. Okay, so we have Leslie. And uh, Leslie, do you, want, do you want to keep your um, topic as a surprise or would you like to share with the team? what we're going to be hearing from tomorrow. Okay, I want to share my topic. So my topic is <clears throat> the benefits of doing Pilates. Oh, great. The benefits <clears throat> of doing Pilates because I'm a Pilates girl. <laughs> okay. Uh, I forgot how to spell Pilates. How do you spell it? Uh, P-I-L-E-T-E-S. Did you say E? A. No. A. Ah, uh, A. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, great. So I thought it was different. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I thought it was like, you know, yeah. Well, okay. Great. So the benefits of doing Pilates. Great. Um, This is one topic. Who else is Me? volunteering to... Oh, okay, Lorena. And do you have a topic in mind or would yeah. you like... To... Oh, amazing. So what is going to be your topic? How to you... help a blind people. 
Oh, great. How to help blind people. Amazing. Great. I love it. So we have these two topics pending for tomorrow. Um, so we have already uh, Ms. Garcia, Imelda, and Lorena, and uh, Leslie. Those are the four people who have already participated. We're going to be hearing from this um, tomorrow, how to help blind people and the benefits of doing Pilates. Amazing. So for tonight, basically that has been it, guys. Um, I All that I have left to do is basically... Thank you very much for your active participation. And so the problem that I need to report is 1.2 exercise 3, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be reporting that. And uh, for now then, thank you. Have an amazing rest of your night. And I hope I'll see you tomorrow for the last class of this week. Um. So bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye, -bye. Till the next one. Bye-bye.